Hello, this is Adam Rayner with Mr. Mark Clark for Slingshot World Magazine. And this is for the Tie Your Own with Mark Clark. Now, I did bring a coffee this morning, Mark, didn't I? Yeah, it yeah. a nice coffee. Yeah. You've had that. You've had that. Now, that was my comparison in the text about how band sets. Yeah, it's nice to buy a coffee, but if you want to make your own, you're going to be getting them cheaper. And it could be everything from inexpensive, like instant, or it go all the way to serious posh. But we're going to have a look at how you do it, because you do tie bands uh, like a good one. So... Tell us a little bit about, let's start with the materials down here. What have we got down here and what band set are you making, Mr. Clark? Well, this is from a daughter, so I'm going for a GZK 0.62. It's quite quite light, easy draw. Uh -huh. She fixed, shoots to a fixed anchor, so it'd be quite short in length. Um, you had the template there, didn't you? There's yeah, yeah. Bits, uh. She has, uh, this, this, is, um, this is her template. There you are. Know. Case's template. So yeah. I always keep one, always keep one by. I've one with with my own, uh -huh. and then whoever I make bands for, I make bands for like my son, my daughter, and a couple of lads that yes. I, I have a mooch with. And I was privileged enough to get a set of yours on my very posh frame, and immediately I saw the pleasure on your face when my shooting actually went up a notch because I was shooting with a better band set. Put that in the article at all. So yeah. show us how you lay this out and what that that thing there is. That that's a a specific catapult elastic band set template. That piece of plastic, yes. Yeah. To be honest, if you if you got a set dimension I'm gonna move these leaves out look if you've got a set, yeah, if, you, set if, if you've got a set band set like as in dimensions that suits you yes and it's what you use all the time then I would just really recommend one of these GZK templates yes I'll shoot uh, like 22 17s 195 working length so that set. is a piece of plastic with slopey yeah. lines to get different tapers or the same taper so you can manufacture a few. Yeah, exactly that. It just makes it just makes it so simple, you know. Like uh, let's see you get it ready for us. Yeah, there, there's Kate. There's cases. There's, there's light lays in there. Look, uh -huh. that would be there. You can get take that out out of there. Me, I'll shoot a different different length, but once again. Taper. That'll come out. That, they on this lay it. That'll come out the same there. Look. So yeah, yeah, you can you can get different different bands to suit your needs out of the, out of the same taper. It's just gotcha. a case of where in the taper you take it. From how thin to how thick. So show yeah. us how it's done, Mr. C. Yeah, I shall. All right, let's get rid of those. Okay, so uh... right, I'm going, running off Casey's taper. We're looking at. A sort of 200 mil overall. So, obviously, like this, this as it happens, it comes in handy. That it's already laid out in centimeters. I got that from uh, Asda. Man. Yeah, it was handy. It wasn't that expensive either. I think with the cutter, it was about 8.99. I played more than that at uh, yeah. hobby craft for my self-healing mat and cutter. Right. When you get your when you get your elastic off a roll, it's not off. It's not it's, often. It's not off square. It's not square. It's never square. So you think you're working from an edge? You might not be doing that. Yeah, exactly that. So I always square it up. So find the square edge. Yeah. You can quite clearly see that. Yeah, you can see it's parallel. not. It's not quite square, is it? So I will take that off. Of course, for them educated, I made some assumptions here. This is a rotary cutter. Mark stood up so he can lean into yeah, it. Yeah, I prefer cutting stood up. And these are a skill that you need to develop. And if, this and is if, a skill you need to develop. And if I'm ever cutting competition bands, I always put a brand new, brand new blade in. If I'm, if it, if it's just for sort of plinking about the place, I don't worry too much. So five, ten, fifteen, twenty. That's your two hundred. You've got a squared off piece of yeah. Uh, then, then I'll know she's square. The reason Mark's be using a new blade would be because it's a natural product. And, um, well, we discovered fairly early on that TheraBand was made for people rather than shooting catapults accurately. And therefore you get granules and little bits that were a bit different and a bit of inconsistency. And if you don't quite cut through it perfectly the first time, that can be where your band set goes, can't it? It, it will be where your band set goes. You can guarantee yes. it will be where your band set goes. So, uh, take, I mean, the good thing about them ones as well is they've got protection on... Yeah, so it makes good sense. I hope my yeah. one the blade moves yeah. it. But I've uh, there's certain things you there are pairs of phrases that one of which has to be a lie. Like I use a rotary band set cutter, but I have never cut myself. One of those <laughs> statements is a lie, isn't it? 
Well, it has to be. That's your Amazon and they're Ralph Cup for sure. Dan, prove me wrong there. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is a journalist rapidly backpedalling. Is why we have got Mr. Mark Clark to do this because he's talented. I have cut myself. If you are a dyspraxic nard like me and you know you're going to hurt yourself, well, you know, continue to shop with Sheepy's Best Bands, Herm the Hunter, and you know, old Hawks, Catapults, and accessories, all as seen in St. Chopwell magazine. This, this is about making your own though and, uh, and best practice. So you're now cutting that whole thing to the length of the. Uh, yeah. So get it square. So you've got, you got, you got, got, got your working length between the lines, uh -huh. and then the overall length that allows me for tying on. But I'll, I'll give it plenty. I'm not worried about it. So this is calculated working length being when you've tied it to the pouch and you've tied it to the frame. This is the portion of elastic that will be remaining not inside a knot. Exactly that. Which the actual length working working of length the band yeah. So the that's working a crucial length. term there, ladies and gentlemen. One, 160 is the working length. I don't even really know what mine is. Do you not? <laughs> a bit of disgust on his face there, really, fat man. So then, with these templates... My consistency is terrible, though, but uh, this is why we're doing this learning. They're lovely, because they've actually got all your... Oh, wow. They, they've got all your dimensions in. Yes. So, you just get it in and make sure you central, centralise... Let's see if it looks like Everything exactly how you want it. And I'll leave, I'll leave a bit of spare either end. Make sure that everything runs parallel. That looks so bloody precise and perfect. Yeah, it is. And then off we go. Nice gentle pressure down. Up. Now, I made no mistake, there's probably about 30 pounds between the blade and the cutting board there in terms of pressure. Yeah, there are no compromises, there's no way you're part cutting it or needing to go through it twice. No, I'm I've often run along it twice and, and it's never this sensible act, is it? Because you're never going to. And then, yeah, off she comes. I mean, sometimes with this thin, thinner elastic, you can you can cut cut double. You can lay one on top of the other, uh -huh. and you can cut. Then you know they're exactly paired. But to be honest, these are these are paired. They're fine. You always get one spare, but normally I'll cut the whole roll. Yeah. But because this is for Casey, I'm only making a few band sets up. If it was me, I'll cut. I'll just cut the whole roll. That's awesome. Yeah. Mark, let's stop there so I can take yeah. some stills. We'll just uh, cut it there and take a couple of stills for the mag there. That was fascinating to watch that, thank you. Okay, we've got the cut up elastics and we're now going to put the pouch on. And uh, well, those look a bit sort of curly and frankly grody and a bit knackered. And there's the string for tying them on with. Now, Mark, I gather that when it comes to a pouch, you use them until they're destroyed and you really want them broken in like a good belt pair of walking boots. Yeah, the more, the more used and the more weathered in your pouch is, the more I like it. So I, I will actually use the pouch till it breaks. I like I like a good used pouch. I'll put a new one on if I have to. Okay. Show us how it's done. Show us how it's done. Right. Now this is the constrictor knot method that the true experts prefer. I'm a fair, look, I've said that one again. I myself, well, I'm still using wrap and tuck, which gives you a big lumpy knot. Some people love it a bit, but better you are at it, the more folks are using this. And um, I gather that particular Bit of string isn't just any old stuff. That's fly fishing backing line. Yeah, backing line for for fly line. I make myself sound like an expert. You told me in a previous take where yeah. I messed up on tech. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just it ties a lovely lovely knot. It's strong. Shush, it's strong. Shush. It's fine. Do it. Do it. Do it. Let's see how this thing's done. Right. Okay. This is I'll use a, a Tim Orham jig because he used to live up the road from me. So uh, why go anywhere else? Uh -huh. This, by the way, is what the pouches look like when they're brand new. So we can get the focus in there. So I'm, I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick like a used pouch, a nice, nice small one. Okay. Now what we'll do is I'll zoom in on your fingers, and um, if needs be, just stick them up at the camera a little bit once you've done it, because obviously it's. Yeah. You've only got so many joints in your fingers, and unless you're an octopus, it's. So yes, it's being tucked through there. Yeah, I'll stretch and draw. Mm -hmm. That's it. We've got it oh, there, there, there goes my string. Oh, oh, it would be really cool watching yeah, it was water yeah, dropping in the drink. Yeah, everything. It ends, didn't. Everything can end up in the water room. Yes. And then mm -hmm. I'll just work that to the line, uh -huh. exactly on the line, so that line, the line's covered. That was about the active length. Okay, yeah, exactly, over, exactly that. that. That's where we're going to go onto the catapult. Mm -hmm. That's where we're tying onto the pouch. Lovely. Perfectly tied in half. Fold it over. So mm -hmm. everything touches. And they go in the clips then? Yeah, and then we go on onto the clip. 
bit of sandpaper on, on these clips. It just stops everything. Just ordinary rough neck, screw fix direct, wherever you want to get them. And I leave about eight mil. Yes. Fold my pouch. Mm -hmm. Same again, about eight mil. Yes. And then it just so happens. Stretch her up. That they just fit perfectly to clip those clips on. That's a clever yeah. little arrangement, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. So now I can zoom on in and we can see the man do the constrictor knot in 4K. Yeah, there you sure go. Focus, there we go. And then. Oh, it's like a fishing video. Look at that. that. You comes can under. see what he's doing there. Underneath. Hand in the way there. That's it. Because it lined up. Lovely. Yeah. And then I, I always like to sort of turn around and work, to me, work back to myself. Yes, yes. I slide the constrictor knot back until it actually touches the pouch. Yes. The band where the band actually touches the pouch, and then I give it a tug. Not a, a mighty one. Not a tug. ruthless, awful tug. Yes. A gentle tightening, and then I cut mm -hmm. with about three mil of spare. This is another part of the process here involving. New carp fishermen out there will know will know this bit. Blobbing. Yeah, I will blob. I'm afraid the term blobbing does not appear actually in the glossary, although I think Mr. Mark Clark did actually suggest that blobbing was a term that did go in there. Now I feel bad because there he is, blobbing. And there we are. No, that's that is serious. Right, so there's the constrictor knot. Let's have a little closer look at it. We uh, we stopped there because it sort of got lifted up out of shot, but if I zoom back a bit like this. And if I grab hold of that, because, um, well, I'm the one with the monitor here, Mark, you can see. Get in as close as that and see how neat and tidy that is. That really is tremendous. Put the hand behind it, show the focus. Dude. Okay, so if we cut that off, and then we can show folks how neat the actual knot is as well. Because um, there's a the little bit of sprue on the end, isn't there? Yeah. Okay, here we go. So how do you remove the, uh, the excess part? Right, always give it a really good stretch now. Okay. Because if it's going to break, I want it to break now. Yes, sir. I don't want it on my cat on my catapult. Yes. So, like I say, I fold the pouch like it's got a steel in it, mm -hmm. and I'll actually pull that, max it out, maybe ten times. That really is. That's giving it a right old. And then that's it. Yeah, I'll take it to max. Yes. And then, when I trim, I trim really close. Frighteningly close. close. Because you've tested it and you don't want a single microgram no, of plastic right. it's to not, accelerate it, that you don't want it. It's not going to move. So I run my scissors straight to the back and I leave maybe one and a half mil on the front snipper. And then I even trim it more than that. I cut the, cut the edges like that. And when I've done it and I trim tight, it's super snug. Yeah. Let's have a look at this, ladies and gentlemen. You see, with the constrictor, it doesn't it doesn't move. That elastic does not move through that knot. So you can you can work tight. You can work neat. So this pouch, if you fold it in half, you can see it's going to be an OTT one. But yeah. That would be the inside where the pouch is folded because Mark's knots hurt his face otherwise. That's so tight. Let's see. Put the other side on, Gator. Let's just. I'll shut up and let you do the full. When I've trimmed it, I'll give it another. Te I will test it again. So every pro every process is is tested. Because if I want it, like I say, if I want it to fail, fail now. Let's see. You tie the other side on, then, sir. Right. Let's go the other side. There we go. So band jigs generally seen as the way to do these things with best precision. Oh, like I like a jig. I can tie a wrap and tuck the hand, um, but it's going to be a little bit of a rock chuck in not very precise things. But this is all part of the uh, distance apart is crucial with it, made to the size of the clippy doos that are supplied with it. But there's a few band jigs out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is the only one I've, the only one I've ever used. I used to tie them over my leg. But um, it's all about simplicity, isn't it? So once again, Centralise that knot. Probably on video. Yeah. 
line everything up. Eight mil again. I only, I only guess it, don't have to measure it. And then roll that constrictor right down till it actually touches the pouch. Nice tug. About three mil of spare. And then blob it. So hard in the wind actually, but I'm going to have to move that. It's not Oh, that's pretty stills. Huh. Little edit there while I'm doing the stills, I just let them hand get away from each other. Now, uh, there are many videos online of people making bands and band sets. And, um, well, I can't pretend that we've made the best instructional video ever. But what I definitely know we have done is witnessed a master at work. And um, there's also a whole bunch about the philosophy of making band sets and getting it done right. That's the roller string that very nearly went off the uh, side there, didn't it? So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nearly lost it in the drink. Nearly, but it didn't. What's that roll there? That's a slightly rarer one. We've been using precise... Oh, yeah, the no. GZK um, uh, orange there for K, yeah. but you've got some precise clear, isn't it? As well? Yeah, so. I've got some. No, it's actually, yeah, wherever it is. Is it in the box? Was that in the box? There was a whole point is, is that there are many kinds of elastics, yeah. and these days folks are importing them from yeah. China in all sorts of ways. Precise natural. Yes. It's nice. I've actually tied, I've actually already tied, already tied some. You can take one of these away with you, Adam, and give it a go. Well, I certainly will, thank you, sir. Well, that's the... Nice one, nice and long for my um uh it's not quite sure it's long, is it? Yeah. And so perfectly neat and precisely tied. Let's have a look at that one. There's another lovely example. Yeah, it's tied. Brand new pouch on that one, look. Brand new pouch, hence uh hopefully for somebody else's. Yeah, hence it's for someone else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look how beautifully neatly done that is though. That's uh, just so cute. In fact if I was gonna be that someone else, I'd be using the knots on the other side. And I'd be using OTT. Yeah, most people have put the knots on the outside and they're fine with it, but I well, actually, I do run it right next to my face. And if I wear glasses when I shoot, I'll shoot the glasses off my face, so... Whoa. Mm. Do you know what? When I were a lad, when I was 13 years old, I got given a present by a friend of my family's that was like, represented everything I didn't want to be. It was an executive briefcase with my initials on it. <laughs> The uh, dent in my relationship with my father that was made when he found the pouch cut hole in the side of the flexible leather where it was gone. <laughs> Suddenly yeah. came back to me then, it's um, catapults, <laughs> they run deep for me, but I knew even now I would still use that piece of leather with better reverence and joy than that flaming case that represented everything I didn't want to be. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Mark Clark, thank you so, so much. I know it's been a bit challenging because I've been, frankly, technically pretty rubbish at this today. The main issue is that uh, band sets often better made yourself. Marks are as good as anybody's. But if you do have a look at the uh, techniques, have a look at the kit that's out there and generally available. And generally, you're going to know you're going to need a good rotary cutter with a sharp blade, a self healing mat. Think about getting a band jig. Mark, thank you so much, Geezer. You're welcome. Absolute Absolutely stuff. welcome. Is to. Um... Oh, yeah, you've got to tell me about your. Um... <laughs> A bit about your lifestyle here and uh, the fact that where you live here, 
owner of the property isn't remotely troubled about you harvesting the odd pigeon off the trees and so forth. And yeah, yeah, that, that is my home, a uh, 40 foot narrow boat, and uh, this is my garden. Just and as luck would have it, it does provide me with the odd breakfast. I will have, I will have um, the odd pigeon. The fellow that owns the boatyard is more than happy with me shooting a pigeon or two, so that's not a problem. Always very careful about yeah, sneaking up to be a uh, backdrop of the entire park. And always aware of the backdrop. And yes. to, to be honest, that is that over there, you do get general public, but I'm talking about, I like to shoot my pigeons at sort of half five, six o'clock in the morning before yes. anyone's up. And uh, if we just zoom in to the other side of the uh, waterway here, we'll see. Yep. Most of those leaves over there have got perforations in small groups. This is Adam Rayner with Mr. Mark Clark signing out for Slingshot World TV. Thanks, mate. You're welcome. With a bit of pre delay. You hit it so hard the focus left it. <laughs> I'll shoot you so hard, your ancestors. I'll shoot you so hard you'll lose focus, mate. <laughs> Literally. It went smacking it. It was lovely in focus. And it just doesn't want to focus now. Well, when it speaks, right? Yes. That's so cool. No, that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> Rufus Hussey, eat your heart out. I shouldn't say that. That's a bit, a bit braggy. Let's have a look at that frame on camera here, Giza. Oh, the it's the one shaking like crazy with the deck. It's the one that I, I banded up for um, Caroline down the Mickwick Bowl that day. Uh -huh. Classic Acer Wilson. Yes. Gorgeous. Hello, ladies. How are you? Lovely, isn't it? No, it's the mother says hello, the daughter blank me. <laughs> oh, I say, there's a ruffian. The fellow lives here upon the water. A horrible common. <laughs> yeah, there he's a river gypsy. And he spoke to me, my God. How awful. <laughs>